Hi and welcome to the Martin Bell Show. Hopefully you've been keeping well and I'd like to wish you a happy new year for 21. Hopefully it is a better year. And if you're new to investing and you want to get into it and you've started to discover it, I have a perfect news article for you. It's 10 golden rules for rookie investors. Um, I'd like to make you aware I am not a licensed professional, so please do your own diligence research or seek professional advice before making any investments capital is always at risk and you could always have, end up with less than more than more than you put in so please be aware of that i thought i'd just go through this article to see my opinions on it i thought it was pretty good so let's go through it together and we will see what it says so it says here 10 golden rules for rookie investors the prudent investors have seen it all over the three decades of the stock market's ups and downs here's his top tips UK shares have halved twice since the turn of the century, but each time recovered. So this is what it means is it means there's a good buying opportunity to buy more shares. As long as you don't sell below the bull price, you would have eventually made your money back and more some. So it's just the importance of buying and holding and staying firm. As long as the fundamentals don't change. Most investors hold too much money in the UK and too little in the United States. Yes, I am also looking to diversify my portfolio, but I have just opened up a SIP account, but there's not much money in it, so it's very hard to diversify an account that doesn't have too much money into it, because it does cost money to purchase my shares. And ETFs, because I'm, I'm with a different company, I'm not with a commission-free traded company. So, my first foray into the stock market was um, age 25 in 1984, I wasn't even alive then, when their cut prices of BT shares were sold to small investors. The profits helped pay for skiing holiday and whetted my appetite for investing. A few years later, as a freelancer, I took out a personal pension that became my first PEP, a forerunner of the ISA which is, um, a ISA is if you're not from the UK, a, or if you're from the UK and you haven't used an ISA, basically you can have a stocks and shares ISA, so you can put up to, up to, as I say, the sum of 20,000 pounds which a year, which is a large sum of money. All capital gains and dividends are tax exempt, and you can also reinvest for dividends, and that doesn't account, account towards your annual allowance. So you can really build it up and make large sums of money. I know 20 grand is a lot of money, but they do cap it as they do need to make tax somehow. But there's also something called a SIP as well, which is something I have created. Not I have created, but it's um, a thing that they've created, which is a self-investment personal pension where you can put up to the sum of 40,000 pounds. I know only, but you put in say um, and then the government top it up 20% uh, of whatever you put in up to a certain sum of money and if you're a higher rate taxpayer I think you can also fill in the form and claim the, the other part back as well so let's get into it as it's getting late and I've got to head to work in a little bit and I don't want to be late and I want to get this video filmed as this is my second attempt as I all my workers contacted me seeing what I wanted to do about work if I wanted to work some of my annual leave and which I do because it's not like we can go anywhere at this moment in time and I just want to reinvest that little, the extra money that I get so little and often is the best way to go and set up a monthly direct debit is going through the good and the bad I totally agree with that and what else that I do as well is that whatever the end of the month is left in my bank account part goes into um, like a, like a another bank account within the same bank and it goes into like a cash and like emergency and fund and basically and the other part goes into my saving not savings investments into my ISA or my SIP so that's what I also do as well one of the biggest mistakes is to stop saving when share prices plunge and start buying again when they pick up that's totally true Think about it, would you shun the shops when prices fell and only buy when they rise? I suppose it's the fear of lost and losing more. Because um, there's a saying in the market, it's like bears jump out so the windows and bulls walk up the stairs. So basically saying prices fall quicker than prices rise because fear is stronger 
And then uh, the greed. <laughs> Number two, don't panic when prices slump. You are in this for the long term, so the stock market panics are noise. You can afford to tune out. UK shares have halved twice since the turn of the century, but each time they recovered. Anyone who sold after the market fell this year would have missed a 9.1% one day rise in March at a 4% one in this month. So you get opportunity for good gains. Right, number three. Dividends pay in paid by companies and funds can turbo power your investments. This is also true, this is also very good for many different reasons is because you get to reinvest, which means you can buy more shares or more units of an ETF or an index, which will then give you more money to buy more shares and more index, or later on, you can take it as an income and live off that and it keeps coming to your way. If you have no dividend paying stocks or ETFs, you have to sell your position to get a hold of that money. And then basically you don't have it ever again. So I'd rather have it slowly uh, drip off little chunks and then more come more coming more money coming in and it also does over long periods of time they do tend to increase the dividends so if you invested a four percent dividend every year to buy more shares from a 100 pound start you would have 146 pounds after 10 years and 324 pounds after 30 years and that's without any other growth so there you go that isn't without capital appreciation or you adding more money into the, the system. The downside is the charges you will be paying for managers that at a percentage should run your money and some are greedy and that is something to be careful of as obviously high commissions or charge rates. Tracker funds are a great starting point. These just shadow the stock market index but are very cheap. And mostly my, most of my ships will be in tracker funds because it's a retirement fund. It's a long haul thing so I'm not going to be in and out. I'm not a day trader or a trader. I'm an investor and most some, I will have some single stocks. But I will have more single stocks in my ISA. As it's a short to medium term. And my SIP is medium term to very long term and long term obviously. And then if obviously if I ever learn large sums of money I would also have like a general account where everything would be taxed but it could take a bit more risk just because um, I built my strong foundation there because I can afford to take that hit. So most managed funds tend to underperform stock market indices which is true. Fees matter as their only guarantee is only guarantee in investing. Absolute return and investment typically is a, a special type of fund designed to deliver a usual modest return even in the market downturn right so there's all the different things if you want to learn what they are you can read them yourself so here we have the SIP so this here stands for self-invested personal pension essentially a pension fund where you control the strings definitely right so number six most investors hold too much money in the UK and too little in the US the key is balance, and yes, balance is true, and it also goes for um, bonds as well, and other items, to, and to be in REITs as well, if you can, which is a topic for another day, which stands for Real Estate Investment Trust. If you only have your money in one sector, in the stock market, or in a single part of the world, you're leaving yourself to expose to sentiment or an economic performance, and then you've also got natural disasters, and other problems that could happen. You can afford to take more risk when you're young, which is true, as you have more time to recover from cash drifts. Wind down the risk as you get older, but don't get lured into swapping shares for other investments. Number time, number eight, sorry. This is a very good example. Blind faith is bad. Neil Woodford was a hugely successful fund man manager, delivering excellent returns to investors. Practically in the early 2000s, dot com bubble, was it dot com? Yeah, in 2000, when most shares and funds were losing money. But many financial advisors and investors then followed the man rather than 
scrutinizing the investments he held in his funds. So basically, they didn't do their own diligence and then people just plowed in for what he's doing well. They got too greedy and they didn't do their due diligence. And I think there is actually a council in the UK that actually put their pensions into the Woodford Fund and really the person who was doing that, they should have done their research and have, there should be um, procedures about risk management, not being allowed to put all your eggs into one basket and diversified risk as well because you can't mess with people's pensions, you can't afford to take that risk. His investment style had changed but the advisors who had had have alerted investors fell asleep on the job. Woodford's flagship fund was suspended in 2019, leaving many people poorer. From what I heard is that you should never have five more than 5% of your total assets in one single stock or into a stock or something, and no more than 15, I think it was 15 to 20% into a sector say such as consumer staples and you have to do your own research on what the um, sectors are because that's beyond the scope of this video it's a topic for another day so number nine take responsibility for your money you are the only one you can trust true experts may give you tips online but they can only get it wrong but they can get it wrong such as when Hargreaves Lansdowne clung to the Woodford funds and they did do your own research and read money pages of newspapers. Above all, beware of scammers. So never take advice from cold callers, social media tipsters. They have always an agenda to make money at your expense. And this is true. And if you see anyone in my comment section posting a WhatsApp um, phone number or some Bitcoin thing, it is not me. It is a scammer, so please do not follow them, call them out, report them, block them, they are scammers, they're not good people, bad, bad people, they're trying to commit fraud at your expense, and this is also true for um, people who may be giving advice for it. it's like penny stocks, so they may be trying to push the price up of the penny stock, and then sell and make you at your expense, so they make the money and you make for loss, so be careful of that too. So make sure you understand what really what it really means. It's not just the chance of share prices falling. You must also realize that spending power of your money will fall. Inflation eats into it. Oh, and don't forget to spend money. Your money. Anyone who has seen Wolf of Wall Street knows the investment industry wants to stay. Wants you to stay invested. Then they take your cash as fees and spend it on their homes, cars, and yachts. So. Invest with aims and enjoy your money. And it says here the top uh, investment ones is like Hargreaves Lansdowne, <coughs> Invector, Interactive Investors, Etorum Fidelity. I have heard of the first two and looked into them. I haven't looked into Etoro. I don't know how good it is. It's like a trade in 212 exposed and Fidelity is meant to be good as well. So let's have a little quick see at the glimpse of the comments. Um no. The comments are not that great. Not good at either, just very short and nothing adding value. So I hope you enjoyed this. As I said, please do your own diligence before making any financial decisions. I'm not a licensed professional, so please don't take what I say as um the gospel truth. Do your own research or seek professional advice. Also, if you have any toxic debt, by toxic I mean like high interest debt on credit cards work on paying that off first otherwise you're just going to get further into debt and also build a emergency fund first three to six months or if you're more conservative and you like to have more security and there's also tolerance to your mindset as well if you feel more comfortable with having more more um, months of like cash savings for expenses then also increase the time freight and as well also if your job is highly specialized and it's hard to find a uh, refulfill that current job position on that level of income also increase the time frame as well 
So that is what I would say. Hopefully you found this video useful. Hopefully 21 will be a better year. I'm going to be investing more this year as well as saving more and hopefully I'm going to get my income up more and hopefully this channel will grow and I'd like to document my journey of my growth and it'll be great to show right from the beginning towards the later stages because there are YouTube channels most of them actually miss like the really early stages as of some channels I watch they don't really start from zero which I have on my SIP where I've started from around 500 pounds I know that's a large sum of money but that will be built built you can build it up over long periods of time so thank you for watching please feel free to subscribe click the bell notification click the bell notification button so you don't miss a video and I'll see you all soon